Hey guys, what up? Welcome back. So in the last video, what we did is um, we went ahead and we created our database using Postgres and we um, did all the authentication. So we set up our user and we looked at the admin. So now we're going to go ahead and create our first app. And I've mentioned before in the previous videos that Django is all about modularity. So um, it's all about building individual little puzzle pieces that all form together to make one particular image. So you can think of, you know, the puzzle, the overall finished project. Um, when you start a puzzle and when you finish it, the, that is the application itself. Um, and the little individual pieces are all the little components that um, can compose the, you know, the overall project. So we're going to go ahead and create that first puzzle piece now. Um, and in the Django community, that's called the app. So let's go ahead and uh, we need to go to our command line so that we can access the manage.py file that we've used so many times already, which is right here. And we're going to use that, say python manage.py, and then start app, and then the name of our app. Now, it's always a good idea to have some sort of idea on what you're actually building before you start building your website. I already have a basic idea on what I'm trying to do. I've mentioned before um, that I've owned this uh, new movie site, and I don't really feel like just getting rid of the domain since I've already had it for you know years and years, and I already pay for it and everything. And I just decided. You know, I'm not going to talk about Hollywood movies or anything, and I haven't been for like a year. I mean, this thing just goes completely un, um, unedited and things, so uh, it's just a mess. But I'm going to be saying goodbye to it, unfortunately, and um, I'm going to be transitioning it over into a video, um, kind of a video website that kind of showcases the YouTube videos that I create. Uh, and maybe what other people create too. I haven't really decided on that. But uh, essentially, I want to display it in, in the typical blog information type format. Um, but instead of like really written articles, I might write stuff, but at the moment I'm just going to simply kind of link to um, YouTube videos. So that being said, we're going to be creating a video app. And the video app is going to be responsible for collecting data for individual YouTube videos. So what we're looking at then, since um, you know this is YouTube that, that my videos are being uploaded to, YouTube obviously has some you know, similar data points that we're all familiar with. So it has the video title, right? So I probably want to store a title. And what we're going to do is just kind of create a list real quick of uh, the things that we want to store. So I'm going to store a title, uh, probably an upload date. We'll probably have the date. Um, You know, we'll just have upload date. That's fine. I was thinking about whether or not I should have another date that kind of like the date that I added to the database and then an, a date that I actually added it to YouTube. But I don't really think I need that separation at this point. Uh, we'll have a description. So a description on um, of what the video is about. Maybe some tags. Um, so we can tag the video like Python um, or other some other descriptive type of thing. So like if somebody's searching for all Python related videos, I can say, hey, you know, find all tags that contain Python. Um, and let's see. So then uh, one of the most important things, we'd obviously need the uh, video ID. And we'll want to use uh, any sort of multiple words. You want to use an underscore to separate each word. But uh, video ID is certainly important. Um, and that's this YouTube video right here. And we may want a full. I was thinking maybe I want a full URL because what if I start uploading videos to other platforms besides YouTube? It's kind of uh, you know short-sighted to say, hey, my entire uh, infrastructure is going to be on YouTube and it's always going to be that way. And you know, YouTube could pull the plug on me and maybe I decide I want to put my videos somewhere else. You never know. So I was thinking, you know, maybe you know instead of video ID, I, I might need a, a full URL that goes to some other video site. But for right now. It doesn't really matter. We're just going to go with the video ID. We don't need the full URL, so that's probably overkill. So I think we have a good little you know, base starting point on what our app is going to be consisting of. So now that we've done that, let's go over here, and we're going to say start app, and we're actually going to call this a video because ultimately that's what, what it is. So this is going to use uh, the built-in Django feature to build an app. So if we look at our database, uh, or I'm sorry, our actual uh, file system, where our project is located, you'll be able to see 
um, that we have this new video folder here and the video folder has this migrations folder uh, the init, which is necessary because this app is considered a Python module. So in, in order for it to be um, imported, you have to have that init file there. Um, there's an admin file. We'll be getting into the admin more late, later. Um, you have an apps folder or file, which is actually new um, to something in Django 1.9. I'm not even too familiar with that. Uh, models and then tests for being able to test it. And then you have reviews. And uh, we'll get into all that stuff a little bit later, but definitely make sure you don't delete the migrations. If we decide that we want to change our data structure and we say, you know what, I don't want the video ID, I want to do a video URL, or I want to add a video URL and have the video ID. What, um, it, what needs to happen is when you add that field to the database, any data that's already stored where that field is not there, your database can become corrupt. So you have to do something called a database migration. Uh, prior versions of Django up until like the last few versions didn't have any sort of way of doing migration so you had to use this um, plugin that was really popular called uh, Django South or Python South but it was called South something or another and it worked really well but sometimes it didn't work and you had no idea why and when it didn't work you were pretty much screwed so um, luckily in the newer versions of Django they do have database migration support built into it which is an awesome feature. All right, so let's look at the uh, the contents of what's in here. So if I refresh this, I should see um, I actually don't see it. All right, so here's the video. I need to include that in my project here. So this apps.py file is something new in Django 1.9 and essentially it's for um, being able to configure certain features that this particular app, so the video app, um, needs at runtime. You can configure certain elements here, but for the most part we're probably not going to be messing with that too much. All right, so the next thing we're going to look at is the models file, and this is where things get a little bit more interesting because we're going to start using that list that we had just comprised of what the video needs to store for each video that I plan on adding to the database. So what your models file is used for is it's actually used to build the schema in your database. And it builds, and Django does this for you automatically Use something called the uh, object relational ma uh, mapper, and that's... Um, you typically hear of that as an ORM, so O-R-M. And um, Django does a lot of the hard, heavy lifting SQL work for you, so you don't have to be a, a DBA or you know database expert to be able to use it. All you have to do is just define in a Python-specific way, a Django-specific way, which is just Python, how to structure your database and create those uh, columns uh, that you need you know, as far as like how you plan on storing that data, is it going to be a daytime field? Is it going to be an integer? Is it going to be text field, character field? Um, you know, something, something like that. And you can think of that as um, a schema is just like with the users, right? So you have this uh, users, and this is just a database table. The server's not running right now. I apologize, but um, if you go into your database table, you can see each one of these tables here. This is all your schema. And in case you guys want to know how to spell that, it's S-C-H-E-M-A. And that's pronounced schema. All right, so now that we know what that is, let's go ahead and, and build that models file. So first, I'm going to go ahead and um, just copy this from the Django website, which just so I don't misspell anything. And we're going to create our uh, class person. It's actually going to be class video. So you typically want it to be uh, the name of whatever sort of uh, model that you created and this is from their their website here so I don't want to mess that up so here's our first name we're gonna have um, instead of first name we're gonna have title because remember we we created a list here so the first one is going to be uh, title we want the max length um, probably I'll say 200 characters I mean just in case it's a really long title if it's longer than that I'll just have to truncate it truncate means just chopping it off all right, so now we have this uh, models. Uh, it, there's a character field. There's also a text field. So if you're going to be storing large amounts of data, you should probably put that into a text field. 
and you probably should give it some sort of max length, but I'm going to give this a large max length because I don't want to uh, exceed that. I'm thinking that I probably won't have more than 5,000 words in a description, but that, that could end up uh, being larger than that. I'm not really sure, but we're going to call this description. Uh, we have upload date. So let's go ahead and just copy this real quick. And just the upload date. And we'll get rid of that. Now there should be some sort of date time field. All right, there's date time field. And we probably want to have a default value for this. One of the helpful things with the, uh, the date time field with Django is that we can actually import um, from the utilities. We can import a uh, time zone to set a default value. And then in order to be able to, to set a, a default value inside the parentheses, we're just going to go ahead and add um, default equals uh, time zone dot now. So we're using this, uh, and this is based on your settings file. We set our time zone. When I went, I, so here's America, Chicago. I'm actually going to change this to New York since I'm on the East Coast in Virginia, United States. And um, this will actually, Django will use a time zone for this particular area and set the actual date time field by doing that. So that way we don't have to manually update that uh, every time we want to add a new video to the database that will automatically be updated. So now we need to add the video ID, which is going to be similar to the title. So we're going to go ahead and paste that down here. We'll call this video ID and then the max length. It's not going to be nearly as big. So we'll just say 50, which is probably way more than we need. But, you know, for right now, that should be fine. So now we're going to do the tags as just a, a string. So we'll just have like a comma. Uh, delimited set of strings that we'll use for the tags. Uh, seems kind of ugly. It seems like maybe there should be some sort of tagging sort of library that we should be using, but for right now, we're not going to do that. We're just going to go ahead and copy this title up here. And I'm hoping that there's not going to be more than 200 characters of uh, tags. We could end up running out of room depending on how, uh, how many tags we want to add, but I'll just have the tags be this, um, you know, this character field. So it looks like we have a pretty good setup here. Uh, with our video. Now in order to get this uh, schema into the database we need to go to our little command line tool and we're going to run python manage.py and then we'll say um, make migrations and this should automatically go out and detect um, actually before we do that I apologize we need to add the app to our project and we do that through the settings file. Anytime you create an app you have to tell your project you want to use this new app or puzzle piece, you know what I mean? So you're telling your your main your dashboard for your puzzle that you want to add this new piece to it. And we go down there to our installed apps, and that's where we're actually going to do that. We're going to do in just a single quote uh, the name of the app. So we call it our app video. Now, if we go ahead and we run make migrations, it should detect video, and then it should look for the model's file for video and you can see that it created an initial migration for that which is exactly what we want. So now that the migration has been created we need to actually migrate the database to use it so we just simply say migrate. And now um, this should have gone through and created an entry into our database for this new table. So let's go ahead and refresh everything in here. And you now see that we have a video video table. And if we go in here and we look at um, like the columns, you can see that it has the columns that we added to it. So ID, ID is going to be created by Django. Everything in Django has to have a unique ID, so it's going to automatically create uh, an ID. So every time we add a video, it's going to sequentially increase it by one. So if, if video two is already in there, the next one's going to be three and four, and, and it'll, go, it'll go into the millions and billions of rows. So um, that will automatically be done for you. So that's really good because um, we'll get into that more as well. And then you can see that it has all the little fields that we added to it, right? So there's nothing in there. There's no entries into the database. But uh, that's how we went ahead and we, we created it. So we're, we're making good progress here. 
let's take a look at the admin file because anytime we want to use our new app and be able to add data to um, the you know the, the model that we just created if we want to add data to it we through the admin that that comes with Django we need to actually update this admin.py file to use the new da database table that we just created all right so now in here what we want to do is I'm going to borrow this from the Django site we're going to say from models import instead of question we're going to say the name of the video um, you know, the models, uh, the video class that we have defined in our models. So that's actually what we're importing right here. And then we're going to tell the admin site to register that video. So I'm going to paste this in here and then replace question with video. And let's go ahead and uh, run the server because anytime you make a change to the admin, you need to restart the server. Okay, and now that we've done that, videos is going to show up here. So if I go ahead and click on video, there's nothing in there, but we can go ahead and create our first video right now. So I can give it a title, and we'll go off of this uh, census fail video just for right now. And this is just a, a test here, but now you can see the upload date actually defaulted to today and the current date time. So that was that helpful feature that I had showed you guys about. So that way you don't have to actually enter that because most of the time you just want to do the, the date that you're creating the entry. That's typically the most important reason. And then uh, let's give it a video ID. So we'll paste in that and then we'll go ahead and just say uh, census fail rock band. I, I don't know. This is just uh, temporary. So when I click save, you can now see that we have a video object. And if we click on the video object, you can see that it has all this information in there that we just added. So if I click back to go back to the original page. And then if I go ahead and I look at the actual database um, crap, and uh, refresh this using Postgres, if I click on the video and I look at the columns, and now I should be able to see here. So if I go in here and I right click and I just say view data, view top 100 rows, you can see that it went ahead and queried the last 100 rows, and there's only one because we've only added one. But you can see it's the census fail ba uh, data that we just added. Here's the ID that I was telling you Django creates for you automatically, and it just is sequential. And then here's the tag. So all that, it's really cool. We have it all being persisted uh, in the database. That's what they call anytime you save data. It's called persisting data. So if you're new to programming, you want to try to act like you're more professional by using these terms that make things more complicated than they need to be. Um, and then, okay, so you have the video object here, and that's not very helpful because if we had two listings in here, both are going to say video object, and you're going to have no way of being able to differentiate one from the other without having to click on it, so that's not very helpful at all. So let's go ahead and uh, fix that now. Now, to fix this, um, this is a little bit weird, but you should just follow along. We need to go to our models file. And inside the class, so make sure you're indented inside the class, like you know, just below that, we're going to add a method to this class. And what it's going to do is it's actually going to return the name of, and really there's no name, so we're going to say title. So when we say um, we're going to create a method called get absolute URL, and it's going to return self.title. Since there is no name, it's returning this, right? So every new uh, video in the listing is going to return the actual name so um, we'll get a name like census fail or whatever that video name was called so if I went ahead and I stopped the server and I restarted after making the change to the model file if I go back into the Django admin what you're gonna see now instead of it saying video dot object 
which isn't very helpful. It's going to actually give you the title because we told it to return the title um, for that particular object entry. And that did not work. Sorry, guys, I actually got that confused. What that actually does, what we what we did is it actually creates a um, it creates a URL, so that way you can actually go and view on site for this particular object. And it's not actually um, discoverable at this point, but that is something that I just got confused, uh, honestly. Um, in order to be able to return the name, and that's what we're trying to do now is we need to actually define a Unicode method on top of the, uh, of the class object. So let's go ahead and just like we did here, we're going to go ahead and say, we do need that absolute URL because like I said, um, that makes the URL discoverable from the admin. But here is we're going to say um, Unicode. All right, and I think this should work. So let me go ahead and restart the server real quick. I actually haven't had to do this in a while, so I apologize. I forgot how to do it. Nobody's perfect. All right, seriously, last time, my bad. All right, what we're going to do is we actually need to say under the um, admin site register, we're actually not telling it to, to display the name, and that's the problem. So it's been so long, I'm actually borrowing some code from another part of my site here. We're going to create an admin part, so we'll just call this uh, video admin. And then um, we're going to tell it to actually display by the title. So let's go ahead and down here we're adding a title so we're saying list display and then we give it a tuple and we can give it multiple values that it could list it by but we do have a title uh, for our video and then instead of saying um, just admin site register video we need to actually say video and then we also say video admin all right so if I run ahead and restart the server I'm actually 90 percent confident it's going to work now both of those changes to the model file are necessary it's just I kind of jumped out of order a little bit and um, doing doing those right now because it's not needed right now in the tutorial. So now because we're actually saying to display the title, to go ahead and display the title. And what's interesting though is that that would not have worked with just the admin change if we didn't actually add um, this get Unicode method. This is absolutely necessary uh, for, for that title to display you know, using this list display. So if you would have done this without that change to the model, it wouldn't have worked. So that's why I was saying it's kind of a messed up order. I forgot, um, but hopefully you guys can forgive me. Uh, I'm just getting myself acquainted to Django again after being away for several months. And really, I haven't even had to do this probably in six months or more. The get absolute URL, I might as well touch on that now. You can actually provide a um, URL to where this could be located. So um, what I would do, instead of self.title, I'll say self.id. Because typically, when I have like a URL, I could say like video and then uh, forward slash. And then this percent %s is Python, so you're actually passing in this argument. So this will just be an integer, which is that ID that, like I said, Django. Um, uh, provides anytime you do a, a database update or you add a new video to our database table. So let me go ahead and dem uh, demonstrate this real quick so you guys understand both of these changes and why we needed it. Unicode was for the name showing up in the admin and then this get absolute URL is uh, like I said so that the item in the database can be discoverable by clicking on you know view on website. It's still not going to work because we need to do additional work uh, to make it work, but uh, I want to show you what get absolute URL does. So if we said forward slash admin and we look at the video table, 
and we click on the video object, you're going to notice a button over here, which we clicked on before, where it said view site or view on site. And before I made that change to do the integer ID, it was trying to actually point to a URL that said census fail buried in a, a lie. Uh, what we would actually rather have is have it go to a my domain forward slash video forward slash and then the ID of the video because what we're going to do is we're going to take the ID from the query string which is the URL so it'll be one or two or whatever it is and we'll say hey find the, I the unique ID that matches this in the video table and that will always return the data for whatever um, you know whatever video is being requested so we'll get on into that more um, as we get go along in the tutorial series but if I clicked on view on site it'll actually reflect that video and then one and like I said it doesn't work because there's nothing listening for that but eventually we're gonna create a piece of code that's gonna listen for this request and it's gonna say hey give me the one and then it's gonna query the database for the match um, the match of one and pull back the data so let me see if I go to the video and I view view data the top hundred it's gonna say hey find me that unique ID one that matches which is right here and it's gonna provide all this data so that's why we need that and we'll get into that more and while I'm, I'm here I might as well touch on this example.com is coming from the admin the admin has a sites uh, location Anytime it throws an exception, it threw an exception uh, in the system because we requested some piece of code that hasn't been written yet. So I need to restart the server. But in the admin here, because Django is built so that you can manage multiple websites through this sites table, the site that it has is this example.com. So we actually want to remove this. And we want to say newmovies.com because that's going to be the name of the site. And if we went back and we tried to click on the video, you're going to see instead of example.com, it's actually going to try to go to newmovies.com, which is really going to go to a real website, which is new movies, which is the Hollywood movie. So this isn't going to work either, but. Alright guys, so that's where we're going to end this video here. I know things get uh, a little bit you know, hot and heavy as we get involved here, but we have a completely built app, which is called the Videos app. We added it to the admin, we added it to the database, it's able to accept data. Um, in another video, we're going to go ahead and touch on forms of how we actually input um, this data into the website, but before we can even get there, we actually have to look at uh, templates and um, all kinds of stuff. Um, with our Django website. So we, we have a long way to go here, guys, but uh, we'll, we'll get there. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.